Yeah, this was a cagey affair. You know, I think uh, Steve said it earlier this week that's going to be a tight game, and I think, uh, yeah, when good ge- when good teams get together on a on a you know perfect stadium and a perfect evening, um, yeah, critical moments. Uh, yeah, if you give away critical moments, you you lose the game. And I think both teams displayed, you know, a real tight, cagey game, giving nothing away to each other, right? So, um, I think this what you know down the line, down the stretch, uh, what a what a tight playoff game could look like. Um, and as long as we keep the clean sheet and keep things in our favor and in our hands, um, I think we can work from here. So, you know, pretty happy about the clean sheet. It's been a while since we've had one of those. And yeah, it's a good team. I think, uh, you know, two heavyweights, uh, what they've proven throughout the season. And uh, it was fun. Was fun. Thanks, Coach. We'll kick it off with Tom. Cool. Yeah, you kind of alluded to it there. What Was it a big thing, as much as you wanted to win tonight, was it a big thing not to lose? Sure, tonight. you know, and I think the guys came off the bench and made valuable contributions again and just doing what everything, you know, what a good teammate needed, right? So we had Thomas Ostrak playing in the six uh, when Indy ran out of steam. So, you know, we made some key adjustments during the game. You know, I thought the second half was excellent. You know, I really thought we put it on our terms. Um, we put them in a tough game um, and limited their options. You know, you can see the quality they have when the ball turns over. You know, we didn't have to hold our breath too many times, you know, which was, you know, credit to my boys and credit to, to the system and credit to what we've been doing. Coach, two quick questions. The first, was there any part of your brain thinking we could see them in the playoffs, maybe hold back some of your tactics? Oh, no. I mean, we're thinking in the moment now, you know, how we can win the game um, and, and how we can put them under pressure and what's needed. So, yeah, not for one thought was I thinking about what's happening now on Saturday. Um, or in the next 10 minutes. I was just thinking, how can we now go play by play, get continuously stronger? And I think we, put, we did that tonight. And Coach, I think there were a couple, at least from our perspective, maybe some lapses in concentration, a couple balls that were just a bit wayward. Do you attribute that more to maybe mental fatigue, physical, physical fatigue? And what do you think your team can learn from those, those moments moving yeah, forward? Yeah, I don't think, I mean, we know LAFC is fourth in the league for PPDA, which means they put you under pressure. Um, and we had 52% possession. So, you know, I think it might be one of our highest possessions when we play 11 against 11. So I thought we controlled a lot of what we did. Um, I thought from the 30th to the 45th, we were slightly sloppy, slightly lazy, you know, on restarts, they caught us out, you know, quick restarts. So we have to just brush it up and tighten up a few things there. But um, again, 15 minutes out of a 90 game stretch, you know, plus all the injury time and what have you. Uh, I thought it, it was a lot in our favor tonight. How can you describe the def- defensive performance from the team tonight? Excellent. When you keep a clean sheet, you know, I think it's always a good sign. Um, I think when you limit the opponent to, I think, I don't know what it was, two shots on target, I think it's a good sign too. Um, we defended set pieces really well. Um, so, yeah, again, if you keep a clean sheet, it's always a good sign. But we've been training in the right way for many weeks now. Julian, good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Coach, how vi- how valuable is it to play such a good team this close to playoff time? Yeah, I think it's valuable. I think every team that we've been playing recently and every team we're coming up against has a real chance of something, right? So um, that we get good reps like this. Uh, we've been treating it like that internally as if it were playoff games, you know. Um, and again, puts us to the test, right? So we heard LAFC players talking about how it's a final for them, this 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 game. And I think if you look at that for the new kids on the block, you know, we take that as a big compliment to us, what we've done this season. So, you know, we just continue now. We join the 50 club with 50 points. Um, and we're proud of that and we keep on moving. For sure, we want to win games, but we'll start with this tonight. Yeah, with, with the diamond, you know, we, we try and rotate out into certain areas and uh, it is a good play when he's on the ball. So, you know, we give him a bit of flexibility and freedom and uh, Anthony reads the game really well. When Edu's outside, he's inside and they have a good little relationship. So, um, I just spoke about PPDA, how they jump you. Their, their front four, you know, are the highest turnovers in the league um, in, in, in our build-up phase, right? So, this is something to be wary of, uh, something we pride ourselves by too. <laughs> so, we knew that we're playing against ourselves in many moments tonight night and uh, we have to get around that. Sure. Sure. 
Yeah, when we're able to break a line, you know, whether we're, whether it's at a pass or a dribble, then we create an overload. When we create an overload, we create a gap, you know, there's a, there's a trickle-down effect. So, you know, we were able to get early crosses off. We were able to, you know, especially we're playing with two strikers. Uh, we were able to put the back line under pressure. Um, massive respect for the back line of them. You know, they, they do an excellent job. Um, it's, a f it's a joy to watch uh, Chiellini, you know, after all these years and to finally get to see him in person now twice. Uh, it's been a good experience, you know. It's been a good learning moment for us as players just to see how professional this guy does his job and it's, uh, it's a joy to watch. So, you know, um, we, put the, we put teams in a tough game and uh, with two strikers, you know, we thought it was a good battle. Did you get like water dumped on you? After the no, game? it started raining during my Apple interview. Did it really? We couldn't tell that. No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why I got well, the cut. I can tell that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it looked like at, at times either Klaus or Sam were like, you know, in the box and like waiting for another pass. And after the play was sure. over, you know, damn, why didn't I get the ball? Sure. You know, was sure. That once in one of those cases where there were passes that could have been made? That yeah, maybe. We'll have to look at the video and see and reflect. Um, but yeah, we're playing with two strikers, which means you always have two strikers minimally in the box, plus then an arriving 10 or, you know, a weak side eight uh, arriving in the box. So I thought we, we got ahead of the game really well when we had the ball and, you know, created a lot of nearly moments, um, which is okay. I mean, I just spoke about their back line, how, how good they can be. Um, but yeah. Is, is Uh, Coach, we talk about Roman Berkey all the time, but in a game like this where he comes up big in that crucial moment, saving that bicycle from Chiellini that we alluded to earlier, but there's also a pass that he makes in the second half where he hits Giochini in stride that sure. creates almost a chance for you. How big is he in these big games and these big moments? Yeah, I think you've seen it in, you know, we think every game is a big game and a big moment, right, in our, in our first season. Uh, but I don't think we can take games off. <laughs> so we treat every game equally important and try, try and get the points. But, you know, he knows when the rhythm of the game is. Uh, a few times we got caught with a building up, you know, and then we decide to kick it along. So uh, he knows to feel the rhythm of the game. He knows when to accelerate the game. He knows when to slow the game down, and he knows exactly what to do. So, um, you know, it's, it's a joy to have him with his distribution on our side um, to get uh, Joe on the run, um, for sure. And he's shown that many times, and we've always said it from day one. We know what we have with Roman. You talked uh, in the last couple of weeks about Sam and, and Klaus getting more comfortable together. You know, Klaus dropping back in more of a support role to kind of connect everything. How do you did you see a, a big jump in their progression, especially with that play where Klaus hit the hit the long through ball to Denner? Have sure. you seen more and more sure. development and a big jump tonight? Yeah, I think the system you know gives the players the right positioning and and the right momentum, right? So um, we we even you know when Az came off, we were like, yeah, get get all three on. You know, and let's see how that goes because Klaus has the ability to drop deeper. We saw that in LA. Um, you know, we let Joa, uh, you know, roam around in the 10, and then we got him up at striker, you know, to run the line a little bit. And then Klaus, flexible, goes underneath in the 10. So, you know, we tried that as well. So I think we, you know, it, it's hard, you know, only one or two strikers can play at any time. Um, yeah, my heart broke a little bit for Joa tonight that he that he doesn't you know get in the starting lineup. You know he's our leading goal scorer, and he knows that and he's training well. Um, but we just thought with the matchups this week, uh, what we're looking at tonight, uh, we thought two big strikers against their two big centre backs was the right thing. We got time for two more. We'll go to Julian to wrap up the song. <coughs> Coach, it looked like LAFC was creating a lot of danger with those one v one opportunities, especially with Boanga. Yeah. Was that something that just kind of happened throughout the game, or is that something you expected and you were willing to sacrifice to not give them so much possession? I've seen them do that for many years now, and I've seen them for every game this season <laughs> be dangerous in 1v1. So I think it's just a normal style of play of theirs that they rely on their big playmakers, right? So, um, and I thought we did it really well. Um, for sure, they're gonna get a lot of half moments. Um, but yeah, we got around the ball really well. I, I, I can't fault anything with my players there. It's just a standard game from, from LAFC uh, with difference makers who are great players. This isn't my main question, but is that the first time you've had Klaus, Sam, and Nico on the field at the same time? I can't recall another time yeah. if all three would have been out there. Maybe, not sure. Yeah, uh, is it, how's Blom? Did he come through okay? With he was he he's been trying to treat something on his foot uh, for the last couple of days, um, and he you know he's been taking some medication and his stomach didn't you know. Uh, react well to the medication um, so he, he felt a little bit dizzy and fatigued and had you know spells that come and go um, but once he got settled at halftime and then to try and get him going again after halftime was a bit of a struggle so you know that's when we started to have to be a little bit creative <laughs> because I guess when you had to get Nielsen to go 
90 today under that? Yeah, Nielsen's fine. I mean, he's all right. We have enough center backs on the bench if, if needed be. But, yeah, he was perfect. He he felt it through the couple of days now. He recovered really well. We limited his training load. We gave him two days of regen um, and one day rest. So, yeah, he came through really well. Are you going to watch games tonight? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in results. <laughs> Coach, thank you. Thank you.